and welcome to episode number 25 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. Josh, it's good to be back at the Slash Tracks News studio once again with you, my friend, in, my friend the Slash Tracks uh, nation, the, the Slash Tracks Aholics best friend, Josh LaRue, back with Alex Vanover in the studios, back at it again. How are you doing, Josh? Doing good. On a little bit of a Zelda kick, I guess. I didn't even realize it. <laughs> a little Zelda motif over there on your side of the Slash Tracks uh, studios. The east, eastern side, the southern part of the United States wing there, Zelda. Central, central, yeah, you know, east central. And I'm also looking for, looking forward to Tears of the Kingdom, Legend of Zelda. Um, we had a fake sponsor write us. <laughs> That was exciting. It was a scam, everybody. They wanted us to, they told us we could get a free download of uh, Tears of the Kingdom on our PC, not our Switch, on our PC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was just down. Just download this really ridiculous, uh, ridiculously long and absurdly uh, lettered and numbered uh, zip file. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here's the password. Yeah. Also, give us your routing information for your bank, <laughs> or you can't get the free download of the game. It was a Nigerian prince that sent us that email, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, it was part of his will. Yeah, he, but he wanted us to play the game. <laughs> it was his last will and testament that the Slash Tracks boys got to play uh, the new Zelda game. Josh, um, so if you guys, or if, if there's any other Nigerian princes or princesses out there and they want to get a hold of us and send us uh, some viruses... Or if they want to sponsor our next episode, because this episode is not sponsored, uh, you can hit us up at our business email, slash tracks2020 at gmail.com. And you can send us questions for Dear Slashy. Uh, you can send us Would You Rather questions uh, for the podcast that we can address and answer in future shows. Uh, and you could even uh, do what, Josh, now? We're doing a new feature where people can pay $50 and they get to choose what, Josh? They get to choose which movie we rip on. What yep. else can they choose? They can choose what movie we review next, what movie we riff next. Um, and you what? even had mentioned not yeah. you know novelizations. Yeah, whatever. there's a novelization or fan fiction that's coming up on the schedule that you want to be the next book narrated. You get to pick that too. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, th I think that eliminates some of the. Um, like, hey, what's next? What are you guys doing next? When's the next movie coming out? I want you to do this one or that one. It's like, you know, we're whores. Uh, if you see, yeah. hey, it's so <laughs> it'll it'll just clear up the the process of Master Evil having to put us through some sort of elaborate torture, which leads to what movie we're gonna have to riff. If you guys just, you know, send fifty bucks to the Slash Tracks Nation uh, to us, and then we'll do whatever movie you want us to do. How about that? There you go. Riff yeah. or review and whichever book you want to have narrated next. And starting this month, uh, we haven't set down the date yet, but I'm sure we will very soon. Uh, the Patreon should have its first full Zoom meeting where we all talk on Skype or Zoom. Uh, we'll record it. Any patron of the channel from a dollar all the way up to the highest uh, donation is, is going to be part of it. You can jump in anytime you want. You don't have to turn your camera on if you don't want to, if you just want to talk. If you just want to text talk with us while it's going on, you can join the chat room. Uh, you can sign up to be a patron down here at this address. It's www.patreon.com forward slash 80 slash your librarian. So that's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, Patreon got some big stuff coming up and it's actually going to happen. We're not just talking about it. We're going to be a be We're going to be about it this time. And Josh, the other stuff the Slash Tracks channel has on the docket uh, episode number three of Slash Tracks Reviews is on the way. We are going to be doing Dream Warriors, and we are also going to be doing Slash Tracks Reviews episode number four, which will be Halloween 2018. So that's a little surprise. Uh, so boom, there you go. Something that's not it? ready. Ha boom. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. I didn't hear the boom. <laughs> boom goes the dynamite. There you uh, go. Halloween 2018. Um, Anthony Brownlee who you guys might know as a horror uh, novel writer, a good friend of the show, a good friend of Josh and I. He's in the new documentary, Fred Heads, which is available on Amazon Prime right now. So I recently just purchased that uh, on Amazon Prime, and I believe it was only $6.99. So if you guys haven't seen Fred Heads, which is the new documentary by our friend uh, Paige Joy, Anthony Brownlee, a bunch of our other friends are involved with that project, check it out on Amazon Prime. Anthony is going to be doing Dream Warriors, 
uh, episode number three of the review show we have here, Slash Tracks Reviews, with us. And, Josh, I saw something really interesting, and I'm going to beg Anthony to get in contact with him for us. Okay. Uh, he had Ken Sagos, who played Kincaid, uh, do a plug for one of his books. So, apparently, Kincaid bought one of Anthony's books and did a little advertisement for him on his Twitter and Instagram. That'd be cool. Yeah. To, have him on, have, to be able to do an interview with him. That'd be awesome. I'm, Josh, I am the biggest uh, Ken Sagos fan, like... Uh, I love Kincaid. I love everything about his character. I love everything about his performance. Um, yeah, he was fantastic. He's, he seems like a really, really good human being. And he's doing some charitable stuff. He's been doing a lot of stuff for kids, underprivileged youth and stuff that I'd really like to talk to him about. He'd be he'd be perfect for uh, getting sidetracked, I think. I do, too. Uh, that's one we've talked about before, one of our favorite characters. I mean, well, we, we already had another Dream Warrior, you know, so. Ira. Let's add some more. Mr. Ira Hayden. Uh, yeah, so, and also, so you got the review show coming up. You got the uh, the next episode of Slash Tracks, which is going to be Final Destination 3. We've been hyping that up for quite a while. So yeah. once we finish the podcast today, and we get that out to you guys as soon as we can, the next piece of business will be Final Destination 3. So the next episode of Slash Tracks will be our top priority. I would love to interview him. What do you think? I think that'd be amazing. And that's why I want to try to get him. Uh, when I saw that Anthony was friends with him, I, <laughs> I saw that as an opportunity to jump on the Kincaid ship there. Uh, I've been a big fan of his since I was a child. My, the first Nightmare on Elm Street film I ever saw was Dream Master. Uh, and Kincaid always reminded me of like a kind of like almost like an X-Men character, like Colossal, because his dream power is like super strength. And he just, yeah. I, just I like his attitude. I, I like his I don't give a shit attitude. I like his, uh, everything about him. He's cool. I like the way he dresses. I like everything about him. And he's an even I better person. What, yeah. I hate what Dream Master did to the character, but yes. Yeah, they uh, did him was, dirty. They did him real They did dirty. all of them. Yeah, that was horrible. It's like, out oh, the last movie, fuck the last movie. They don't you matter. You know, they did that because, like, at that exact time in Hollywood, uh, Hollywood, like, L.A. was on a writer's strike. So Rennie Harlan, the guy who re- ended up directing it, wrote a lot of the film and he was like, how can we get the legacy characters, like, killed so we can get to the new characters? It was just, like, a plot device that he came up with out of note. It makes me wonder if he had even seen Dream Warriors. Like, did he have any emotional attachment to them at all? What about, yeah, the person who wrote Alien 3, did they not have any emotional attachment to the, you know, to Newt and stuff from the end of Aliens? I mean, it's, it's a similar situation uh, with Dream Warriors to Dream Master, what they did to the Dream Warriors to Alien 3, where the little girl survives the second movie, just for Alien 3 to start, oh, she died. She died in her sleep. You know, she was... Yeah, I, <laughs> I, hate, I think it's a cheap trick when they do that to the fans, because if it wasn't for the fans, there wouldn't be a sequel in the first place. But let's go ahead, once we got them back into the theater, let's just slap them right in the face <laughs> as soon yeah, as they yeah. sat down with their candy. And- we need to riff that. We need to riff Alien 3 one day, for sure. I could definitely <laughs> see that happen. Hey, yeah. we got to do Final Destination 3 first, though. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But put, hey, put Alien 3 down on the docket. Put it in the to-do list. Okay. All right. Um, let's get into uh, let's get into mean comment, nice comment uh, section of the show. Very first section of the show. Real section. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Brace yourself. Nice comment coming up. Very cool how you're not trying to act like Dead Meat and other channels. It's like I watched a couple friends chilling and talking about A Nightmare on Elm Street. This was a lot of fun. And that was from Hakeem Karnaz, and he's talking about Slash Tracks Reviews, number one, Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. Thank you. That was a nice yeah, comment. Yeah, that is a really nice comment. I was going to say, Josh, you and I, our channels, we both are huge YouTube nerds. We don't just make content, we watch content. Our channel isn't like most horror channels. We don't try to copy anybody. And I'm not the type of guy that um, I'm not going to go out of my way to to try to do what someone else is doing. I, I like to keep everything as organic and natural as possible. I think that's the best way to go. That being said, we do know that there is a show called Mystery Science Theater. But our thing is just an homage. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Fun. Mystery Science Theater exists. Like, we're, not, we're not saying that we don't uh, take certain creative ideas and make it our own but yeah it, for that for that one show yeah <laughs> slash tracks is an homage it's like in in the 
essence where we're we're we love that show and we want there was nothing out there at least that i thought was in the horror community that that they were doing a good job by making it light and fun and because we we don't hate these horror movies that we make fun of on slash tracks we really like them um but we're just talking like it like if josh and i and whoever else was with us we are literally having the same discussions we would have if we were sitting together in the living room. Yeah, watching make these it, movies. Cracking the jokes. That's all yeah. we're doing. Yeah. It is what it is. Um, and a lot of people like it, so we're going to keep doing it. So, na 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the people who leave mean comments, which is what's next, Josh. Oh, uh oh. I think I know uh, which one this is. Let's hear it. it. No, it's you probably don't, but you've definitely heard this one because we deleted it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I did a screenshot. Uh, why does every 40-year-old incel with a computer think they're funny or charismatic enough to put on a uh, podcast? This is just sad, <laughs> and it's quite, frankly, pathetic. Uh, and that's from our good friend, ILK5 Dakika, and that is regarding Slash Tracks News, episode number 23. So he was ripping me an absolute new one. And I is, did we do that episode together, Josh, or was that my solo one? I think your solo one was 22. Okay, so that was us together. He called us uh, 39-year-old. No, he called us 40-year-old incels. So, Josh, my response to him was, I'm 39. <laughs> That's it. I'm not 40, I'm 39. I didn't I argue. that comment. I mean, yeah. I, I resent it. That's what I mean. No, I had it's... Google. Dude. <laughs> what incel was. I had to Google what, in, yeah, what incel was. I was like, what the hell is an incel? Yeah, I got called that before for my narrations or something. Uh, but yeah, you know what? You watched it. You watched it long enough to comment on it, and we appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks, man. He commented, he uh, watched it, and obviously helped the algorithm. And guess what? He made the show. He actually made the podcast. He'll never see that he was actually mean comment because he, he quit halfway through the last podcast. Yeah. But he's, you know, he's Slash Tracks uh, famous right now. All right, Josh, last nice comment of the first segment. You ready? I'm ready. All right, you're ready. You're like, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me get focused. <laughs> All right, this was the funniest episode yet. Such an amazing team. And that's from Find Elir, and that's regarding Slash Tracks number 33, A Nightmare on Elm Street 2010, the remake. That was a lot of fun. Wait, yeah. I thought 30... 30... We're on 35, right? The next one's 35? The next one's 35. That was just a comment that someone left on 33. We didn't get a lot of comments from Hatchet. We didn't get a lot of anything from Hatchet. Yeah, it's weird. It's got the likes of videos on our channel that have like 50,000 plus views, yeah. but it's only showing like 18,000, and it's gone up, it's gone down. It's That one's weird, yeah. and you have to I be an adult. YouTube, I think the YouTube algorithm suppressed that because we actually showed the film. And it was probably blocked in Canada or other countries, so it wasn't able. Yeah, it was blocked in certain countries. Uh, there's boobies in it that we didn't edit out. Um, <laughs> Put our faces on. Yeah, we didn't. <laughs> next time we will. We will next time. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you know, Hatchet is what it is. It's 100 percent uncensored. And if you guys like us making fun of horror movies, check out Slash Tracks Hatchet. It's a lot of fun. We had some good shit in that. Yes, we did. Yeah, most well lit horror movie of all time, by the way. <laughs> Out of the swamp, yes. Yeah, the entire film's budget was freaking to the lighting crew for that film. I mean, what the hell? Uh, seriously, it's... Hatchet is... A, Hatchet... I had never seen Hatchet in its full glory until we riffed it. I had seen pieces of it, and I just could not get through scenes because it was terrible, but I had seen so many positive reviews and so many great things said about it that I, I guess I thought it was a good movie. I just kept trying it over and over again, and it wasn't any good. Well, I tell you what, I saw the best movie I've seen in a long time. And it's probably not on the docket tonight, but I just wanted to say I did get to go see Super Mario Brothers movie. And oh, you did? Yes, I think that is how you do a video game movie right. Like it, it, it appealed to the kids, it appealed to the parents who played the games and watched the cartoons back in the day. I mean, I, I can't think of one negative thing to say other than it went by too fast and there wasn't enough Luigi. What about you? I haven't seen the Mario Brothers oh, movie yet. Um, I haven't seen it yet. No, Nicole's pissed because I've said we were going to go see it the last three weekends in a row, and I just end up getting tired and falling asleep because I'm a 40-year-old incel. And uh, I'm not watching 39, and I'm not watching... 39-year-old um, <laughs> incel. 
I'm not watching Once and Always Power Rangers until we're done recording today. Mm-hmm. So we can't talk about that show or Mario. So I guess, uh, let's see here. It's well, I've be, seen the Power Rangers. I saw it the very first minute it was available. Yeah. I wanted to, but I promised my kids I'd wait till we were all together. But uh, you know what? It's uh, fun facting time. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, hold on. I didn't get to say what I thought about that nice comment. That was a really nice thing of him to say. Oh. Yeah, and we are an amazing team, so thank you. Yes, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, the next thing on the show, besides fun fact, uh, the $50, we already covered that. Already covered it. So 50 bucks. you pick the next movie we review or next movie we riff. You'll, what, that's the fat, Slash Tracks Fast Pass. We will forget Final Destination 3 again. You can jump to the front of the line. What if... We have a tiered system, like a $25 donation gets you this, 35 gets you this, 50 gets you that. We might look into that. I don't know. We'll what see. does 25 get them? I don't know. We'll have to. We'll have to oh, I got an idea. $100 gets you, you can riff the next movie with us. How about that? There you go. You want to be in an episode? You guys think you can do better? $100. You producer. can be with us. Be the producer. And we'll, we'll yeah. Go. You can ride shotgun. Your name will be in the credits, and you can come along for the Slash Tracks ride. $100. How about it? Tyler. And you can be in the wraparounds if you want to. If you yeah, do be that. in the wraparounds. It, Master Evil will come. Hey, and if you really want to be kidnapped by Master Evil, $200. <laughs> Somebody's going to pay it. Yeah. Not to go kidnap them. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to be kidnapped. <laughs> uh, Josh, um, <laughs> let's get into fun facts. Come on now. All right. Josh, pineapples in the 1700s were so expensive that American colonists would actually rent them and carry it, carry them around at parties to flaunt their wealth. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> pineapples. Pineapples. So uh, I love their cakes. I hate their pizzas, but uh, you're they, they just have like half. a big. Dude. Was it like was it like a dude that had the uh, big clock for a necklace? You know. Flavor, uh, flavor. Yeah, if Flava Play was around back then, when he had like pineapples around his neck. Here's my pineapple boy. Uh, no, dude, I was gonna say Lady Gaga instead of a dress of meat would have a dress of pineapples. I can uh, see that. And I know what's going on the thumbnail right under your face. Big old <laughs> pineapple, buddy. <laughs> the Kardashians every episode of their reality show, they'd be just carrying around Fendi purses and pineapples for no reason. And down in hell. Devil and uh, Little Nicky yeah. must have been super rich because they were shoving pineapples up Hitler's butt like <laughs> 10 times a day down there. So, Hey, I'm glad you brought up the Adam Sandler masterpiece Little Nicky from 2002 or two, what, 2001 or whatever the hell. Uh, I saw a little behind the scenes feature on that or somebody was talking about how he was doing that voice. You know, he's doing that voice, the Little Nicky voice. Yeah. And some the one of the directors or somebody was like, okay, he's just doing an Adam Sandler voice. He's trying to be funny. Uh, he'll stop in a second. Yeah. But then they realized he was doing it for every line, and they were like, well, fuck. He, that's the character's voice. He's doing this <laughs> voice the whole fucking movie. Uh, it was fine with me. I like. I love the Chris Farley thing at the end. Uh, that I his mom married Chris Farley. <laughs> in, in I didn't, hey man, little Nikki. Um, that was the first Adam Sandler bomb that he had had uh, when that Happy Gilmore, Big Daddy, Waterboy run. And it was still really good. I think it still was pr- entertaining enough. It was yeah. fun. It was kind and of now, uh, Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, mine's going to segue out of this, so go okay. ahead. And, uh, little Nicky. Okay. Oh, I was just going to say, um, it was, uh, what is the word? Like, he was kind of shooting for the moon on it. It was kind of a uh, big... Yeah. Yeah, it was just a big in scale movie compared to the other ones. I think the budget was a little higher because the CGI and stuff. Yeah, I think it was a movie he really wanted to make, and he was at a point where he had made enough money and got successful yeah. enough that he could survive, you know, doing his project, even if it it was like a passion project that didn't make the money. Kind of uh, like Jim Carrey, Cable Guy situation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Henry Winkler. Good evening. Covered in bees. Alex. Cover Winkler in bees. You can do it. <laughs> hey. Ah! 
<laughs> Henry Winkler and bees. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> Glorious, man. He that's when little Nicky jumped the shark. <laughs> You, you know, <laughs> jump the, jumping the shark, man. They say that's an actual term uh, they created from the Fonz. Yeah, jumping jump. the shark on a motorcycle. I missed the website, man. Like TV Guide bought jumping the shark, jump the shark dot com. Yeah, and they, it's like it's not what it used to be anymore. I used to love going there and reading about all the old shows of their moments where people voted. Yeah, <laughs> win the website. show. My dude, one of my since you're talking about websites that I miss from like back in the day when we were younger. I miss Homestar Runner. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. What is uh, that? Strong Bad, uh, freaking uh, Homestar Runner, it, like Strong Bad, uh, Strong Sad. You don't remember this cartoon? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Strong Bad. Yeah. He was like a luchador wrestler with yeah, boxing yeah. gloves, and he answered he answered emails like this. <laughs> and then there was he had a pet named the Cheat, and he would always throw light light switch raves. <laughs> I, I don't remember know. all that, but yeah, I remember, I, I remember the luchador. I loved it. Homestar Runner. If you guys have never seen it, any Slashaholics are too young to have seen it, go to go to the Google machine, type in Homestar Runner. You're welcome. Enjoy all those little cartoon shorts. They're fantastic. I was playing Slingo competitively against other people on AOL. <laughs> I, miss, I miss ICQ. I miss hearing the, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what are you doing in there, Alex? It's like, I'm talking with chicks from Chicago. Leave me alone. My uh, my kids were watching the Five Nights at Freddy's thing or something, and I heard somebody go, "How unfortunate!" Uh oh, and I was like, "What the heck are you? Is that ICQ? What's going on?" Better check and, your messages. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Josh, did you know that monkeys with smaller uh, testicles tend to scream louder? Oh, that's why all those like political talk show hosts uh, scream all the time at their guests. It's small yeah. testicles. They're just pissed off, man. They're just like, I got such small balls. Ah! <laughs> Everybody knows, like, somebody in their life that is, like, smaller in stature that is louder than everybody else. And it's, yeah. now you know why. Because they have small festivals. Yeah, they're compensating. It's like people <laughs> with big trucks. Uh, you know, same deal. Yeah. They're covering it up. Uh, Josh. Except for you. Except for you. Watching right now with the big truck. We're not talking about you. Yeah. We love you. Yeah. 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 Slashaholics, if you have a huge truck, you also have a huge penis, big balls. You're great at parties. People love to hear you tell jokes. Uh, And also, since you're such a great Slashaholic, if you want to be in the next episode of Slash Tracks for 100 bucks, go ahead and send it to the Patreon, Josh. Send it to the Slash Tracks Patreon. Patreon's below. Patreon. .com forward slash slash librarian. Up above, you can email us at slash rex2020 at gmail.com. And John, we know you're sitting there watching and eating that cereal. You need to put the bowl down, get outside, and run. We just freaked somebody out, us. I guarantee. Some uh, guy named John uh, just put his cereal down. Josh, <laughs> did you know that medical errors are estimated to cause around 250,000 deaths every year in the United States, making it the third leading cause of death? They're made to? Is that what you said? No. <laughs> 250,000 deaths per year are caused by medical errors. So it's the third leading oh, cause gosh. of death. Medical errors. So if you go to the doctor for like, uh, like Kanye West's mom was having like uh, plastic surgery and she died on the operating table, just stuff like that. Like, yeah. So everybody's, you know, there's always somebody in your life that's like, oh, you never want to go to the doctor. You're afraid to go to the doctor. You should go to the doctor, whatever. It's like, listen, bitch, uh, it's the third leading cause of death uh, in the United States, just going to the doctor. I'd rather just forego that, and whatever happens, it's in God's hands, because I'm looking at the math here, okay? Yeah, you don't want, you're fine until you go to the doctor. Yeah. I think a lot of it's mind over matter, man. I think so many people have died from having a diagnosis. Like, okay. there's like a ton of people where it turned out that they had a certain cancer or disease for years and years without knowing it and only after they were diagnosed and found out about it did they start degrading like uh there's studies and stuff on that power of the mind's a strong thing well i i agree with you on that power of mind power of the mind is a really strong thing you can will yourself to perform uh higher than you ever thought you could imagine you can be extremely hurt physically 
and still get the job done if you just believe in yourself and you have a, I mean, if you have a high toler, you know, a high threshold of pain, uh, it's been proven time and time again in sports, in life, in battle. But there is a lot to be said for, I mean, even if you don't know you have uh, a certain disease and, you know, it's like, well, I don't know I have it, so I'm fine. It's like, well, if it's destroying your insides. Yeah, you're going to know if it's that bad. But You know, I don't know, Josh. Uh, it's like, well, I don't believe in it. Well, it's like, well. At I that think point, that, no. no. I think that disease believes in you, though, Josh. Or, yeah, that, you know, at Alex. that point, that's why I said before diagnosis sometimes. I think in some people. Mm-hmm. They could live a long time. Yes. And then they find out what it is, and all of a sudden they go down the hill, downhill like that. You know. Yes, that's, that's, I agree with you, and I also agree. I also believe that um, if you do have a diagnosis and you're really strong mentally, you can live a lot longer and a lot healthier than most people who aren't as strong willed or have such a strong mindset. Because it's like, I don't care what it is. It's not going to beat me. I mean, you've heard, there's so many stories. of Like Magic Johnson, the guy was diagnosed with HIV in 1991. Uh, yeah, it's he, a bad thing, too. It's untraceable in his blood to this day, 2023. Untraceable. I understand he's a billionaire. I understand all that, you know, elite athlete. But a lot to be said about actually working out and taking care of yourself and trying to eat correctly and having a strong mindset. Uh, Josh, did you know that heroin was marketed as a children's cough medicine in the early 1900s? Yeah, we uh, we covered the story. Have we? So, yeah, we heroin? did. <laughs> yeah. Well, good. Well, I have something else to say. Okay, <laughs> good. Go ahead. Well, I'm glad we're doing it again. Hey, um, it was such a good fun fact. We're going to do it again. Let's do it again. It's still a fun okay. fact. It no. hasn't become fun fun. <laughs> it's heroin. Yeah, it's still, it's still fun. Heroin's always fun. Um. Man, little little Susie's not feeling very well. What should we do? I'll just go down to the go down to the snake oil salesman and get him some hair. Get her some heroin. Oh, you know, let's go all the way to the store. I think I got some in my apartment. Hold on, my my newborn was had a bit of a cough last week. I might have some in my medicine cabinet. Yeah, no. Hey, what was that? Um, didn't they used to like uh, for babies back in the eighties and seventies? They'd like put a little like dab of bourbon or something like and put it on their tongue just to calm yeah. them down or whatever. Yeah, they did that to me when I was teething. Yeah, they that's a thing. That actually happened. Um yeah. there's photo there's photos of me, slashaholics, in the eighties with my mom, and like legitimately I'm holding beer cans and stuff when I'm like three <laughs> or four. Yeah. Tylenol Tylenol H plus. <laughs> Tylenol I'm, plus heroin. <laughs> dude, heroin, you know, they back in the old days, uh Coca Cola, I'm everybody knows this, or I think everybody knows this. There was actual cocaine in Coca Cola. There was? Yeah. yeah. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That can't be true. Is, yeah. Was there actual pep and Pepsi? Oh, uh, I don't know. It, was the pep just slang for more Coke? <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, Josh, did you know, I think, you know, and I think this might be the last fun fact of the show. As a matter of fact, it is. Um uh, we're just having. You just realized the next three fun facts he's already covered on past episodes. Yeah, I'm now I'm now I'm nervous. I'm kind of second guessing <laughs> myself. Uh, the IRS, Josh, requires you to report income earned from illegal activities, such as <laughs> selling illegal, such as selling illegal drugs, accepting unlawful bribes, and this also extends to uh, as well as. The uh, the fair market value of stolen goods. So if you and I go <laughs> rob a house or something and we get some really good shit, uh, we would have to report that on our taxes. So why are, why are bad guys and criminals always, you know, like uh, laundering their money and stuff, man? They can get tax write-offs and tax breaks for some of that crime. <laughs> That's their first uh, error in the process of being thieves. But the second, I can't believe that they require them to report this stuff. I think that's just a loophole of, like, someone's got to be dumb enough that they will turn themselves in. Actually, in other news, uh, it is being reported that at least 90% of the stupidest people on Earth are arrested through their IRS filings every year. Yeah, is that a fact? That is a fact. God. I'm just what? kidding. <laughs> well, it's got... All you the know, well, I did sell that dope earlier this year. Uh, yeah. I did sell that bag of heroin to that toddler because uh, he said he had a cough. 
<laughs> Should I claim that? The money I made from the toddler? Uh, <laughs> hey, man. If I didn't reuse that fun fact, we would have never had that joke right there, Josh. Exactly. There you yeah. go. Silver lining. Josh, <laughs> let's get into a would you rather. So we're getting into the next segment here. All right. This is from our friend Johnny Utah. Johnny okay. Utah sent this into the show. Josh, would you rather open the Lament configuration or would you rather open the Necronomicon and read from it? Well, if I open the, the, the Lament configuration, there's a good chance I'm going to be tortured for eternity. I'm not a masochist. I don't care for pain. And if I open up the Necronomicon and read from it, I get to fight some deadites and probably die. And then my body gets to get repurposed the deadite body. That could be fun. So I'm going to go with the Necronomicon. At least that's a more fun way to die. I'm going to go. And let's just be honest here. Both of these options suck. Um, <laughs> You're I don't really, yeah, I don't really feel like getting raped by a sequoia uh, or a pine tree <laughs> anytime yeah. in the future. And the Lament configuration from Hellraiser... Um, you know, pin, Pinhead and the Cenobites are no joke. Uh, the, the only chance you'd have is if you were fighting the ones from Hellraiser 3. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like the CD player shooting head guy. Uh, I think I would also go with the Necronomicon. Um, because at least you'd have a coin flip. You'd have a fighting chance to maybe not get possessed and maybe be able to fight back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but I think that, I think if, you know... If you're messing with the Cenobites, you're kind of fucked. Uh, I've seen well, people get out of it, but they... Yeah, you get out of it, but then they find you again. Um, Necronomicon. Josh, yeah, I'm going to say Necronomicon as well. Uh, I was going to say real quick before we get into the sports. Um, worst case scenario, say you open the Lament configuration and they make you watch Hellraiser Revelations again. Oh, God, no, 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 no. Then I'd be reading the Necronomicon as fast as possible. Josh, I heard you, you pleasure in the delights of the human punishment and pain and torture. Shut up in my basement down there, Pinhead. Hush. I've got something extremely part. painful Hush. for you. <laughs> Hell, Reza. <laughs> Revelations. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one, that that pinhead is is like the special special pinhead. <laughs> that's like the pinhead that you can, that's like the pinhead that you get for your children at their birthday party. <laughs> yeah, pinhead at home. That's what that's pinhead at home. That's like, that's like the pinhead that's at the corn maze in your hometown. <laughs> like they they seriously were like we can't. We didn't get Doug Bradley. We're that's it. We're just fucked. We're just whatever. Whoever wants to play this role can play it. If we can play Pinhead, I mean, didn't we said the costumes were uh, provided by Spirit Halloween or something. Yeah, that oh, we were riffing it. Pinhead's uh, uh, Pinhead Revelations slash Aholics. If you haven't seen the Slash Tracks episode that we do, it is the worst Hellraiser ever made. There's been really bad ones made uh, before it and after it, but. It, Josh, you told me that it was the only Hellraiser that wasn't, like, the only people that got to see it were the people who made it, right? Well, no, it got released. It got released on DVD, but, like, the only reason they made the movie was to keep the rights to the fringe. <laughs> like, they had a certain amount of time, and I think they had, like, six months until it, they defaulted if they didn't make another movie, okay. and the uh, rights would revert back. So they made this movie in, like, two weeks. Is they filmed it like two weeks. Doug Bradley uh, was offered the role and everything, but he didn't want to do such a rush shoot, and uh, he didn't. He had problems with some of the script and shit, so he backed out of it, and they went ahead without him. I think it took him two or three weeks to make that movie. Man. Yeah, <laughs> it's well, pretty bad. It, it definitely didn't shows. We, didn't we uh, have a deer slashy? No, I, we don't have a Deer Slashy this week, but uh, I'm glad you asked. The, thank you for asking, because uh, Slashaholics, we need uh, a topic for the next podcast episode. We need a Deer Slashy. So Josh and I want to give you guys some advice. So for the next episode, 
Uh, do you guys have some marital issues? Do you got some financial issues? I mean, Josh, have you been selling heroin to children? Have you been giving heroin to children? Have you been claiming <laughs> your 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 robbed goods, your top flight goods with the wet bandits from Home Alone? Have you been claiming those on your taxes? Uh, are you currently dating an inmate who is going to be released soon? Do you need some uh, advice for us? Would you like, are you planning to ever be on divorce court? Because we have somebody that was actually <laughs> on it. Um, I was on there. <laughs> yeah, so if you have any Flash questions, yeah, any questions, any advice you need, dear Slashy, we want to feature you in the next episode of Slash Tracks Action News, episode number 26. Write into the uh, to the email Josh just said, slashtracks2020 at gmail.com, and Josh and I will tell you what we think about everything and what we'd do if we were you. How about that? Dear Slash. All right, Josh, let's get into some uh, Slash Tracks sports. Okay. All right, man. So a weird, weird thing happened. <laughs> Weird thing happened, Josh. P.J. Tucker of the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, in game one of the Eastern Conference semifinals, uh, he had one of the weirdest games ever. In 37 minutes on the floor uh, in this huge playoff game, in this huge playoff series, P.J. Tucker attempted no field goals, and he attempted no free throws. So he did not shoot the ball one time in 37 minutes of this huge playoff game and that is actually the first time that that's ever happened uh, in the modern era since the shot clock has been invented in 1954-1955. Wait, did you say he didn't go for any field goals or free shots? He didn't have any free throws. So when you get fouled, you go to the free throw line, you shoot yeah. your free throws. He shot none of those. And he had no, no shots in an actual game. So there was no point in the game where he actually attempted to score. I thought I heard you say Phil, he didn't do any field goals or free throws. And I was it's like, called field a field goals, that's the wrong game, right? No, it's, it, <laughs> I like where your head is at because you're, you're starting to pick up on some sports lingo. But it, <laughs> field goal is also a term in basketball, in oh, okay. football too, yeah. A field goal in basketball is a shot. Okay. So you would, Josh attempted three shots, which would mean three field goals. Okay. In football, a field goal is obviously him kick, trying to kick the ball through the uprights. As long as that is a real thing and you're not just screwing with me, then cool. I just never heard of a field goal in basketball, that's all. Yeah, I was just uh, – I, I know you think that I was trying to get back at you because uh, you called me out on the heroin thing <laughs> for reusing it. You know, some comedians, Josh, if you go to a show in Houston, you go to their show in, like, Portland or you go to their show in New York – they reuse the same jokes, okay? I'm not perfect. I'm a human being, Josh. Well, at least you're not like a YouTuber that watches a smaller YouTuber's channel for content and then copies it directly. Get out of here. That actually happens? Yeah, that happens to us all the time, remember? You know what channel I'm talking about. Oh, no. <laughs> oh! You know what's funny that you say that? Um... I don't know that they directly rip it off or anything like that. I would never accuse someone of that. I know you're just being funny, but like it is interesting that whenever we riff a movie or do something with content, that that movie is being covered by this bigger channel Every like time. a month or two later. And you know what? You know what, Josh? I will say <laughs> this before we get into the next sports story. Uh, it is interesting that they'll do the video of the topic that we did. Uh, and I'll just say the last video that I, I thought that they took from us was scream three. Yes. Uh, their episode has like 10,000 views. And when we ripped scream three, I th what does it have? Like 50, 60,000 views. I mean, a lot, a yeah. lot, lot. So anyway, I'm not saying that ours is better, but, uh, I'm, the math is definitely math in our favor. <laughs> Just saying. Anyways, time to go uh, on to the next topic. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, uh, Goulash, um, excuse me, PJ Tucker uh, had a really shitty game. Uh, so attempted no shots. So anyway, next right, sports hey, story. Hey, is, I want to say one last thing. At least this channel that we're talking about never tried narrating an out of print slasher book. What's that? Okay. Shit, that happened too. Go ahead. Yeah, also, well, well, at least we can say that that YouTuber hasn't put out a news show yet. But just hold my beer, because it's coming, probably. <laughs> or, all of a sudden started playing horror games on their channel, after our channel did the retro horror thing. Oh, wait. What's that? Just, yeah, exactly. Okay. Hey, <laughs> check this out. 
you're going to actually like this story. A New Jersey Little League, Josh, is now forcing parents that confront an umpire, like on a bad, you know, ball or strike call. They're forcing these parents to suit up and ump three games before they're allowed to return as spectators. Wow. So, yeah, Josh, if I was the umpire and you're giving me shit because you don't like my strike zone, uh, before you can come back and give me shit again, you're going to have to be the ump for the next three games. I like that. That's great. I like, I like it. it too. Yeah, I like it big time. That's fantastic. Uh, I think the last... parents that yell at the coaches mm -hmm. and, and yell at the yell at their kids and at the coaches and all that, they should have to go be a coach for the next game. To, to that way, they can show everybody how they would do it better. You know, <laughs> so you're not playing my kid enough. It's like, uh, yeah, because your kid fucking sucks, uh, yeah. and we're trying to win, uh, and I want to win because if we don't win, you're yelling at me for that. So. Go put your upping gear on and shut the hell up. <laughs> get back behind the home plate. We got to finish the game. Yeah, get shut back up. behind home plate if you want to talk to me. There's a rule here in Jersey. We don't just do things willy-nilly around here anymore. Uh, Josh, last sports story of the show. On April 26th, 1989, Josh, over 34 years ago, Kevin Mitchell, the, the great San Francisco Giants former MVP outfielder, made his famous barehanded catch at Bush Stadium. So I don't know if you've ever seen this highlight, Josh, but it's wild. Kevin Mitchell, uh, I don't remember a time in my life where I don't remember this play. I remember being a little kid and like trying to do what he did, catching wiffle balls with just my hand, not my glove. So a ball is hit to deep, to deep center field of the outfield. Kevin Mitchell's for the Giants is running back. He misplays the ball, so he's going to catch it with his glove. He loses where the ball is, and he just puts his bare hand up and catches it with his bare hand. Wow. I've never seen it before or since. I mean, it's wild, man. It's wild, dude. That ball was hit off of a baseball bat. It's probably going like 100 miles an hour. He caught it barehanded. Dude, I'll never forget. I mean, that's an amazing story because that, 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 his hand had to sting for weeks after that. But He might have broke his hand. Forget, 19, yeah. I'll never forget 1992, 93, this kid all of a sudden was like a pitcher for a major league baseball team. Mm -hmm. And he, it's like his arm would just do this crazy thing. And then one, time, one night his, he wasn't able to throw it. So like his mom told him to do underhanded and he struck a guy out with like, it was, it was crazy shit, man. That was 93, and he floated it because she told him to float it because he found her name in the glove he was using. Yeah. When they you won saw the that game too? Yeah, it was crazy. for the Chicago Cubs. And you know what's crazy is Gary Busey. I didn't know he was in the major leagues at the time either. Yeah, and Christopher Lloyd was out there helping the kid. He no, an that's angel. Angels in the outfield. That's that's you're talking. Am, am I getting them mixed up now? <laughs> yeah, Angels in the outfield is the where he's like Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um rookie, rookie of, the year, of the year. He breaks his arm. The arm fuses back. The ligaments and tendons fuse tight, so he's able to throw, you know, fastballs. What they don't explain is he falls on the mound, and when, what you're saying is where he floats the ball uh, in the yeah. final, you know, climactic scene. He floats it because he fell. He, like, tripped on a ball, breaks his arm again, but instead of his arm being broke, he just can't throw fast anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that, that doesn't make sense. His arm would have just been broke again, and it would have healed even tighter. Uh, that's like Saved by the Bell when Screech got hit by lightning and he could predict the future. And then he like got hit by lightning again and then he couldn't predict the future anymore. It's like that logic. Serious note. They actually finally gave Screech a proper move on uh, the Saved by the Bell, apparently. I haven't watched it. But apparently they all just, they're all eating in the Max. Even Max, the magician dude who runs the places there. And they yeah, all share it. their favorite stories about Screech. I so, saw what's it. What's that? I saw it. Yeah. And was uh, it, was it? it was pretty good. I don't like, I, I'm really happy that they honor Dustin Diamond, but I hate it when people do that. It's like, uh, it's like, well, he's dead now. So now we can honor him. It's like, maybe you should have yeah, honored him. When he, you should have honored him when he was alive. He was the old, Dustin Diamond was the only person that was in every iteration of Saved by the Bell. He was on Miss Bliss. He was on Saved by the Bell. He was in the new class. He was in the college years. Um, Alvin was on all of them. Except what, for uh, college years, right? 
Belding showed up to the college years wedding in Vegas. So technically he oh, was okay. on the college years. Um, I'm surprised he's not on. He's, he's been on uh, different comedy shows guest starring, like Always Sunny in Philadelphia and stuff like yeah. that. So. Dennis Haskins, who played uh, Mr. Belding, he's, I love him, but he's gained a lot of weight. Have you seen him lately? Yeah. He's yeah. very big. Yeah. Um, I was going to say one more thing before we get into Slash Tracks Wrestling about Saved by the Bell and about, uh, I think that's awesome that they're honoring him because Dustin, Dustin Diamond, uh, it's like what they did with China with the WWE Hall of Fame. It's like, yeah. We're never going to let you into the Hall of Fame when you're alive. It's like what they did to Macho Man. Um, yep. But when you're dead, we're going to put you in as fast as we possibly can because then we're going to make sell money DVDs. off of it. <laughs> yeah, sell DVDs from it or sell Blu-rays or whatever. It's like, I feel like funerals, like for human beings and stuff, are great for the people that are grieving and miss the person. But it's like, you should be telling the people when they're alive how, how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like... When my mom passed away, um, I know this is getting a little sad, but when my mom passed away, I wanted to make sure she knew how I felt. I wanted her to know I loved her. And I tried to show her that I loved her every day of my life, not just when she was dying in a yeah. hospice house, you know, barely able to to breathe anymore because her the hepatitis C was just destroying her body. I feel like if you guys love somebody, you should tell them now. And if you really appreciate them and you like them or care about them, let them know now because they're not going to, I mean, we don't know. I mean, I've, we, Josh and I have never been to the afterlife yet, but uh, maybe they can't hear you. You know, they probably can't. So tell them now when you know they actually can hear you. It does them no good when they're dead. You got any thoughts on that, Josh? I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So. I don't know. Just like if you care about somebody, let them know now. Don't wait. It's stupid. It's I, ridiculous. I <laughs> Yeah, you might not get another chance. Um, Josh, uh, let's segue from China, uh, them screwing her over and putting her in the Hall of Fame finally when she went to heaven. Uh, let's go into Slash Tracks Wrestling. Let's do it. All right. On May 2nd, this week, Josh, it would have been the Big Boss Man's 60th birthday. Do That's you have? It? Yeah. Do you have any special memories or any really good recollections or anything that makes you happy about Ray Trailer? Oh, yeah. I, I loved him when I was a kid. I didn't like him whenever he was in the uh, Towers of Pain or whatever they were called. Twin Towers. Twin Towers, yeah. I didn't, very unfortunate name. Um, I didn't like him then, but whenever he was uh, fighting the Mountie, like in the Nightstick match oh, and all yeah. that, and the Shock Stick match, man, I loved those. I couldn't get enough of those as a kid. Um, I loved Big Boss Man. When the Mountie um, lost the match and had to go to, to jail for the night. Yes. Yes. That's some of the best comedy WWF, WWE has ever done. Jacques Rougeau actually absolutely knocked that segment out of the park. That's what I thought Jell was like for the longest time, you know, until I actually went to one. Oh, uh, man. Different, that's, I, didn't, I didn't break the law, by the way. It was a visit, but yeah. He was until framed. Was like. <laughs> Josh was framed by some of the haters in the comments below. Um, they were just trying to get Josh so bad. There's such a bad hater, they framed him. Uh, they said he was ser selling heroin to children for cough medicine. I saw a gel on a tour whenever I was about 12, and uh, that's when my perception of gel changed. Before that, it was like what I saw in movies or yeah. uh, when Big Boss Man put the Mountie in jail overnight, you know, like a little cell with nobody else there. Um, yeah. I have two two really quick memories of the Big Boss Man. The first one, um, when he handcuffed Hogan, uh, with the handcuffs to the, like the ropes or whatever, or he handcuffed yeah. him, and Hogan wasn't supposed to like, I I don't he he accidentally broke the handcuffs too early, didn't he? Yeah. Like the yeah. handcuffs. You'll put himself like, back in them. <laughs> yeah, they were gimmicked. The handcuffs were gimmicked. They weren't real handcuffs, or they were real handcuffs, but the the strap in between the you know the chains that hold it together were gimmicked. They were so when Hogan like fell off the apron or whatever, the the cuffs broke, so that wasn't <laughs> supposed to happen. And the other thing about Big Boss Man that I remember was when he was feuding with the Big Show, uh, and supposedly the Big Show fed or Big Boss Man fed the Big Show's dead dog to the Big Show. Yeah. Do you remember that? That's yeah, before he hung the Big Show from the steel cage. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, also like, dog. yeah, and also Big Boss Man interrupted the Big Show's dad's funeral, um, and like rode his casket 
out <laughs> of the cemetery, or I can't remember if it was uh, the big boss man who rode the casket uh, while the big boss man... It was the big show riding the casket as big boss man was pulling the casket out of the cemetery. <laughs> um, spoiler alert, kayfabe, uh, big boss... Or, excuse me, big, bo- uh, big show's dad wasn't actually dead. That no. was just a storyline. But that, that's He had already story. died in 1993, Andre the Giant, so... Yeah, kayfabe as well, not his real father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Hey, hey, Josh, last night on Twitter, Sergeant Slaughter, former WWF champion, and I were talking for like at least 20 minutes on my Twitter feed. Uh, after the show, you should go check it out. And he actually brought up Andre the Giant to me. Oh, cool. Yeah, he posted a bunch of pictures of Andre just absolutely kicking his ass in the photos. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. there's a, yeah, there's a photo of Andre like in the 70s giving Sergeant Slaughter the big boot. And Slaughter's just not <laughs> Slaughter's not taking Andre to the slaughterhouse in this match. It's the other way around, dude. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I was gonna text you and be like, dude, get in on this, but you were on Arkansas time. You had been night night, I'm sure, for yeah, a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, check that out though. Uh That's slash awesome. Alex, check out check out my Twitter, uh Van Dollar15, if you want to see me talking to Sergeant Slaughter for like 20 minutes last night. Check out the feed, it's pretty cool. Uh on May 1st, Josh, 20 years ago on SmackDown. Rowdy Roddy Piper introduced Stephanie McMahon's new secret signing, Mr. America. So this was when Hogan was suspended uh, currently. So yeah. Hulk Hogan couldn't appear on SmackDown. So Stephanie McMahon brought in Mr. America, who was Hulk Hogan. Basically, everything about him was Hulk Hogan. The music, the boas, the <laughs> tank top, the spandex, the boots, the taped wrists, the mustache. Uh, everything except for he had a blue, uh, red, white, and blue mask on his face, and he still said brother. He still did the ear cup, everything. But Rowdy Roddy Piper introduced him, and Rowdy Roddy Piper is like, does perfect. Rowdy Roddy Piper, uh, like, I know who this is. This is definitely I. I'm familiar with this person. <laughs> it's comedic gold. It's beautiful. What are we your thoughts Roddy. on that? We lost Roddy way too soon, and. Big Boss Man, I can't believe he would only be 60 right now. We lost yeah. him. He was in his late 30s, right, or whatever, or 41, early 40s. maybe. Yeah. Something like that. People don't realize that. He he started wrestling very young, very young. Um, Big Bubba in WCW. He was like 21, 22 years old when he first burst onto the scene in, in uh, Georgia. Mm-hmm. He was, uh, he was uh, but yeah, um, as far as the Roddy Piper, Mr. America thing goes, love Roddy Piper. He's my all-time favorite heel hero. That's one thing I'm never going to forgive myself for, not meeting him before he passed. Um, Mr. America, all I remember is thinking it was fun, getting to see Hogan do something different. I was hoping at the time, because he won the tag titles. With Edge, Edge, yeah. As Hulk Hogan. I was like, okay, now as Mr. America, it'd be funny if he won, like, the IC title or something, you know, something he never had. U.S. title? The U.S. title. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for Mr. America, the United States title for Mr. America. Yeah, and that would have been great, you know, and it would have added more to Hogan's thing. Like, uh, Big Boss Man, I think the only thing he ever had was maybe the tag title and the hardcore Hardcore, belt. Hardcore belt. Yeah, that was his last feud was a hardcore title stuff. But, yeah, anyways, about Hogan, one thing I read on WrestleZone.com was that Mr. America wasn't Hogan. Like, there was this big thing going around that he was going to take the mask off and we were going to find out that it was just some other dude that looked like Hogan or something. And people actually believed that shit. And I'm like, it's, it's, it's Hulk Hogan, people. Like, the, the mouth's in sync, the mustache, the build. But there was literally a big group of people there that swore up and down this was not Hulk Hogan. And that was going to be the big swerve. At some point, they'd reveal that, that Hogan would come out and, like, attack Mr. America or something. People really thought that all, all the way up to the point. Uh, to his last SmackDown when they went off the air, you can find the video of it where he, and he took the mask, mask off, off and he goes like this. Yeah. <laughs> he um, I I think part of the reason that was so funny and and that angle worked for me and you was because it clearly was Hulk Hogan. Yeah. 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 Um, people, people I want to get conspiracies about everything. So. I. I had seen an interview with Hogan where he was talking about the Mr. America gimmick, and he's like, yeah, he's like, I thought it was fresh. I thought it was really interesting. He thought it was going to be like when Dusty Rhodes did the mask writer thing back in Mm Mid-South or whatever, or not Mid-South, excuse me, like old NWA territory. Um, 
he thought it was going to be similar to that. But when, Ho when Hogan got his first booking sheet as Mr. America and saw that he was losing his first match, it was like, okay, all right, brother, there you go. Like, they're not pushing it. It's already, it's already, I, I, the writing's on the wall. And that was basically why he took his mask off and revealed himself. I don't think anyone was supposed, I don't think he was supposed to do that. Oh, really? Yeah. He, <laughs> that was what, his last night, though. The last night he was there was when he did that. Yeah, he didn't and, come uh, back again. And, Dude, he didn't come back again until he wrestled uh, Randy Orton or Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Whichever like, one was second. Later. Yeah. Yeah, two yeah. years later. Um, they, I think Hogan, Hogan was so over and so popular after WrestleMania 18 with The Rock that... And I don't know if it was nostalgia. I don't know if it was because Hogan was back in the WWF or whatever. He was so white hot. Uh, they wrote it a little bit, but I don't think they milked it enough. They like basically that he lost the belt like a month later after he beat yeah, Triple H. He, that was all just ceremonial, I think. So he could be the first undisputed champion or whatever with that belt. I know Chris Jericho is the first undisputed, but that belt, Hogan was the first one to have the undisputed individual belt right so they wanted him to have the first i mean yeah. maybe i or maybe Not maybe cool. maybe vince was like hey i want to see if i can still ride this guy for a little bit longer but i think hogan at that i think when hogan got the belt back and he had all this really great uh fan reaction and everything maybe he started feeling himself a little bit too much and then he was kind of maybe trying to pull the same old hogan stuff he pulled when he was you know babe ruth yeah. at the time i don't know who knows? We weren't there. We don't know, but we can definitely speculate. Yeah. It was a fun final chapter, you know, yeah. almost final chapter. Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was cool seeing him in TNA, too. I had fun with that. But hell, Hey, uh, hell of a lot better finish to his career, as far as I'm concerned, than fucking putting one foot on Double J's chest. How about that? Yeah, yes. And then throwing him out of WCW. Uh, Josh, huge, huge wrestling news. I know what it's not. I know you're not going to tell me what? that Cody Rhodes uh, beat Roman Reigns and became the champion. I know that's not what the story is. So no, what because, is it? No, uh, it's actually on April 28th, 1994. Oh, okay. This is, uh, God, this is 30 years ago or 29 years ago? 2004, 40, yeah, it's like 29 years ago. Duke the Dumpster Drowsy made his WWF debut on Monday Night Raw. What's your thoughts on Duke the Dumpster, Josh? Duke the Dumpster Drowsy. Um, yeah. Duke, Duke the Dumpster Drowsy is a different guy that like would fall asleep halfway to the ring carrying a trash can. That's a different guy. Um, but but Drowsy, that so you're guy. You're thinking of draws. I'm no, talking it's, about. It's, it's, it's Duke the Dumpster Drowsy. It, it really is. Jerry Lawler and JR and whoever was. That's what they called him, Drowsy. Drowsy. Look it up. It's Drowsy. Okay. Oh, I said drowsy. You said drowsy. Like he falls <laughs> <laughs> what a stupid-ass so, gimmick. But, dude, the world has never been the same since he premiered on Raw. Like, the wrestling world, it, it started something that's never stopped. And it's just, it's still going strong. All because of Duke the Dumpster Drowsy. Yeah, I, I remember him headlining a bunch of main events, uh, yeah. a bunch of WrestleManias and stuff. He actually... Yeah, he actually he was supposed to. I remember uh, WrestleMania ten. It was it wasn't supposed to be Luger, Brett, Yoko, and the three you know the three main event matches. It was supposed to be Duke the Dumpster going over on Brett, yep. and then him going to face Luger uh, after Luger beat Yoko, and then Duke the Dumpster was going to be carried around by Macho Man Tatanka, Bob Sparkplug, Holly. Hogan was going to show up up and challenge him, but in a twist, Drozzy was going to defeat Hogan. Within 10 seconds. Um, do you think that Drowsy... Yeah, Dr no. Instead of Hogan showing up, Duke the Dumpster shows up at WrestleMania 9 with his garbage can, and Brett's all, go get him, Duke. Go Duke. get him, Drowsy. Go get him, Drowsy. <laughs> and then Duke hits Yoko with the fucking garbage can and does the, the Van Daminator. He does the RVD thing with the fucking trash can to Yoko. <laughs> No, he blocks. He blocks Fuji's salt with the trash can lid. Catches it and throws it yeah. on Yoko. <laughs> throws it in Yoko's face. Wraps his big ass in that trash can. One, two, three. And we still don't know why Drozzy had a black eye that night. Yeah, we don't know the I, full story. 
I heard that, that Coco Beware punched him because because Coco's bird was showing more affection to Drozzy backstage. Frankie. <laughs> yeah, Frankie was showing more affection to Drozzy. So, yeah. you know, Coco Beware wasn't going to have that, and he punched him before the show. Why, okay, this is the last thing I'm going to say about Duke. <laughs> um, so when he got that gimmick from Vince and Pat Patterson and Briscoe and whoever, you know, Bruce Prichards, when he got that gimmick, he didn't say, I don't think that's a good idea, or did he say, Vince, this is a great idea, and he's just thinking, I want to get a paycheck. What was he thinking? Yeah, I think Vince said, I think he told Vince, Vince, I don't know if I want to be a, uh, a trash man. That doesn't really scream main event to me. And Vince is all like, well, there's option two. You could not work for me. Yeah, <laughs> take the trash can. I'll go out there. <laughs> or option three. You could be the bird man. Or you could be the egg man. You could be <laughs> oh, the egg, egg man. man. Egg man. No, or right option here. four. How do you feel about the Legion of Doom? You can be shit. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna. Hey, if Duke the Dumpster ended up being shit and he still had his trash can, he could just take a shit in the trash can. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't even have to hide from anybody. Uh, <laughs> hey, Josh, last wrestling story of the episode. Yeah, because we've given way, we've given more time to Duke the Dumpster Drozzy than WWE gave attention to his <laughs> character. So. <laughs> we, hey, in the future... Uh, we should have a future podcast episode where me and you just like fantasy book Duke the Dumpster's <laughs> career all over again. We we re- we go back and rewrite storylines for him and how it should have went out. He gets a how grudge match happened. against Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> oh, dude, King of the Ring! Can you imagine if Austin? Him. Hey, can you imagine if Austin at the '96 King of the Ring instead of wrestling Jake the Snake Roberts? He's like, in, there there'd be no Austin 316. Uh, line because it had Duke wrestled Austin in the main event, you know, a King of the Ring. It's like, God, God damn it, this is how I see it. Austin, 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 white hot, yeah, versus Duke, the <laughs> dumpster, shit, drowsy, <laughs> <Drowsy. laughs> all the marbles. And, and Austin's gonna hit him with the million dollar dream because there is no stunner. And drowsy, <laughs> he's gonna counter with the. T- Drowsy's gonna get drowsy. <laughs> I mean, dude, can you imagine Duke the Dumpster winning the fucking King of the Ring and going up there with a big crown on and a scepter with the garbage can? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, dude, you're killing me. <laughs> He's got a fucking crown on and the big rock. Thank you all. This has been a great show. We're done. We're, we, <laughs> Good night, everybody. We've Good lost night. it. We've lost hey, control of the format. <laughs> last wrestling, last wrestling uh, story of the show. Okay. Dark Side of the Ring is going to premiere, I think it's season four, on May 30th at 10 p.m. on Vice City, or Vice TV, Vice City, fucking, <laughs> <laughs> on Vice TV. And here are just a few of the episodes they're going to do, okay? Chris Candido and Tammy Sitch. Okay. So I feel like that could be a whole fucking season uh, uh, of not just one episode. Magnum TA. uh, So I I don't know if you guys remember him, but he was really popular in WCW. He got in a bad car accident. uh, Could have been world champion. Adrian Adonis. Doink the Clown. Junkyard Dog. Josh's favorite pro wrestler to bash, Marty Jannetty. <laughs> don't don't let Marty know I like to bash him because he might kill me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Barry. I tried to book him on a show, man. I almost booked him. Uh, yeah, but so. you didn't have enough heroin to give him or coke before. <laughs> Whatever it was. Um, allegedly, I don't want to get sued. Allegedly, yeah, we don't know for sure. Yeah, we don't know, we don't know what sure. he was asking for. Allegedly, um, don't come for us, Marty. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow, <laughs> Abdul of the butcher, Abdul of the butcher. The bitcher. Abdul the Bitcher. Did Vince uh, fire the dump- him because he hey. playing too much? Duke the Dumpster Drowsy. I'm joking. <laughs> Duke, Duke doesn't have an episode. Oh, um, my God. Bash at the Beach 2000, which is where Hogan put a foot on Double J. Yeah. And the Graham family. Josh, what episode are you looking forward most to seeing? Bash at the Beach. Ooh. I, yeah. That'll be good. And I, I want to see the one about Abdullah the Bitcher. I want to see what he bitches about. Like, <laughs> how he got that nickname. <laughs> for fucking putting a fork in his forehead for 
30 years straight, man. Have you seen his forehead, Abdul the Butcher's oh. forehead? It's Dusty Rhodes' head was like that too, man. It was, but Dusty Rhodes didn't have Hep C. Like, actively. <laughs> Abdullah did, dude. There was a wrestler. Wasn't there a wrestler that was, like, suing him for oh. blading? Like, Abdullah the Butcher bladed himself, bled, and, like, bled in the other guy's mouth and stuff with, like, contaminated blood. I don't know. If you got if you get in the ring with Abdul the Butcher, you kind of know he's going to be bleeding by the end of the match. So that's yeah. kind of on the other guys. He shouldn't have fought him. He shouldn't have I, taken that chance. If you're an independent wrestler and somebody says uh, you're going to main event a show with Abdul the Butcher, even though you know he does that kind of shit, you're probably going to you're probably going to do it. I would I would have turned it down, but that's just me. I'm I'm paranoid, so like I'm very yeah. paranoid about stuff. But I, I wouldn't even bleed unless somebody had got an official license because on there they do a blood test and stuff. And, yeah, that's good. You know, that's a good so I, I bled in matches. I've got scars and stuff. I got a big one on my forehead from it, but I, you got to be careful. It's not worth it. You don't get paid enough on the indies to to have that do what ruin the rest of your life. <laughs> no, especially if all the the money from the gate, most of it's probably going to Abdullah for being on the freaking show in the first place. Yeah. Um, I'd say the <laughs> I, one. I wrestled the main event with Abdul the Butcher, and all I got was a stupid hep C. Yeah, all I got was a freaking communicable disease that I can never get rid of. Well, you can get rid of it now, actually. You can get yeah. rid of Harboni. Um, I was going to say, though, th- what I'm looking forward to, uh, Chris Candido and Tammy Sitch, that'll be really interesting to see. Uh, when I was a kid, I had, like, at least 300 pictures of Sonny on my wall. I used to cut them out from the WWF magazine and put them on my wall, like a collage <laughs> Yeah, like Pinterest before Pinterest was a thing, but like real life photos of her. Um, Marty Jannetty will be interesting. And I'm kind of curious to see what the hell they're going to talk about with Doink for a full hour. Dude, I wrestled Doink in Texas. Which one, Matt Bourne or... Uh, Matt Bourne was the original Doink. The second Doink was uh, Steve Lombardi, the Brooklyn yeah, Brawl. There's like, there was like four Doinks. Uh, I wrestled... Rub a dub dub. I wrestled... Uh, a guy that took over on the Indies after uh, the second one. Um, his name was like Tretch or something. It was some weird, strange name. I have to look it up. But he Tretch. was he was Naughty method. by nature. <laughs> he, he was method, very method. Like he he showed up with the with the doink mask on, talked like doink all night, bit my ass for real during the match. <laughs> he, like he bit, bit your my whoop- ass for real. Doink's finishing move was the whoopee cushion, and he bit. Your whoopee cushion. Yeah, I got bit. Like, I had doink teeth marks on my ass after the match. So. Did you guys have a safe word, though? Maybe no. you just didn't say the safe word with doink. <laughs> He's all, ooh, I'm going to bite your ass, Josh. It's just a little bit of wrestling match foreplay. <laughs> I'm going to have to look it up. It might have been mad. It might have been the original, because, like, shortly after that, like, after The Dark Knight came out, Matt started wearing the Joker, uh, Joker makeup. On the independent circuit, did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I did know that, and I only know that because you told me that previously. Oh, okay. Uh, and oh, I, I don't. Something. <laughs> no, no, no. I was going to say that's good. You told me that because I remember asking you, and I don't know if I asked you it off camera or on camera, but didn't Sting started using the Sting Dark Knight Joker too. makeup? Yeah. So does that mean he copied Doink? Maybe. That look? Maybe if that's Doink did it first, yeah. Okay, if Doink did it first, you heard it here, boys and girls, uh, slash of hogs. Uh, Sting, Hall of Fame legend pro wrestler, copied something that Doink did. So, <laughs> crazy. Yes. Uh, yeah. Josh, let's get into uh, Slash Tracks Horror. Let's do it. All right. Uh, before we get into horror, I just got to say, that Duke the Dumpster stuff was like the most fun I've had on the show. <laughs> In a long time. That was great. Fantasy fantasy wrestling heavyweight champion right there. Fantasy, just picturing him in a fucking purple robe with the crown that they used to give the king of the ring and a scepter and a garbage can. <laughs> just, I don't know why that's so funny to me. I just think that's great. Uh, that's fantastic. Yes, it is. <laughs> Josh, on May 1st, 1981, 42 years ago, Friday the 13th Part 2 was released in theaters. What's your thoughts? What's your thoughts on that sequel? Did you like it? Uh, what was bad about it? What was good about it? Bad is it's not a complete movie. It doesn't answer a lot of questions that the movie has. Like half the cast just leaves halfway through the movie. 
You don't know what happens um, to yeah. them. You don't know what, how the dude at the end, if he lived, if he died, what happened. Uh, I feel like they had to rush, but it did set in motion Jason Voorhees as a slasher. So for that, that reason alone, it's it's one of my more favored uh, uh, Friday the 13th films. But it, it seems very rushed. If you watch it now, it doesn't hold up very well, and it seems very rushed. That's it. I think Amy Steele is her name. She's the blonde-haired girl who's like the the screen queen of the movie. She's like the star mm-hmm. of the film. She's oh, like one of my. Oh, Alice in the beginning. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say that. Um, so Amy Steele is like one of my favorite. I think that's her last name. I think that's her name. If it's if it's wrong, incorrect or correct me in the comments below. But uh, she's one of my favorite final girls in the series. Uh, to to be honest with you, uh, but they kill Alice in the first like eight minutes of the film. And yeah. Jason Voorhees gets to the city. He either drove a car or took a taxi cab. The book explains it. If you, if you want to know how Jason uh, was survived all the years in the woods by himself, why his mom never found him, how yeah. he got to Alice's house and back to Crystal Lake, listen to my unabridged audio book, uh, Friday the 13th, Part 2 by Simon Hawk here on the channel. I'd tell you to go get the book yourself, but it's like $900 on Amazon. But you can listen to it for free here on the Slash Tracks Network. It'll answer everything. Uh, but yeah, that does get that does get answered in the book. He he does her dirty, too. Doesn't he just put a screwdriver in her temple? Yeah. Yeah, he, he dispatches her really quickly. It seems like a cheap trick, just like we were talking about with the Dream Master, when they kill off all the Dream, uh, dream Warriors from number three in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Yeah. It's like, Alice goes through all that. She goes through all that hell. She's actively talking about her trauma on the phone call that she gets murdered on. Why would she um, say Crystal Lake? Did yeah. Shit. Dirty, dirty, but, dirty deal. Um, I hate Sackhead Jason. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for that. Uh, some people walking? love Huh? Was he walking in town? Going to with Alice's with the sack head on? Yeah, was he wearing the sack or not? You know, like, I don't he know. Had, he had to have been wearing the sack with one fucking eye hole um staggering around like a hobo looking for children's cough medicine uh from (laughs) 1900s no dude have you tried to walk around with one eye open it's not that easy your depth perception is absolutely fucked he would have been trying to nail her with that screwdriver and he would have like instead of in the temple he would have been getting up in her hairline and shit like he wouldn't have been able to do it i don't think correctly yeah not a good film um i do i do agree with you though i really like that they introduced jason because he eventually became the entire franchise, and I don't even think they knew it at the time, to be honest no. with you. Part no. three, the script for part three, he was supposed to be wearing that clear mask that Shelley puts on at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. That's what Jason was supposed to wear the entire... Third. Just, I mean, it's just there's so many ways that the series could have gone wrong, but at least part two got us going in the right direction. Yeah. You know? So, I like well, the, it. The other thing I was going to say before we go to the next story... Um, the guy you you had brought up, characters just disappear. One of the guys is at the bar. He's drinking all night, yeah. and he you never see him again. So he must have no. just passed passed out in his car. He survived. Lucky motherfucker. Yeah, he slept through the whole fucking ordeal. Um, second horror story of the show. Josh, we talked about Renfield, Nicholas Cage's big comeback mm-hmm. to the theaters, right? Yeah, looks looks pretty good. Looks comical. I haven't seen it. I'm probably gonna watch it when it's available uh, on streaming services or Red Tube, uh, Red <laughs> Red Tube, Red Box. Red Tube is porn. Uh, Red Box. Renfield Josh has completely bombed in the Aww. U.S. Aww. Yeah, on, a- on April 14th, it was released with a 65 million dollar production budget. So since April 14th, it's uh, what is it? May 6th today. Uh, that we're recording this episode, so that's like almost three weeks in the theater. Uh, it has only made back twenty three, twenty three and a half million dollars. That's so, sad because I really thought that was going to be Nicolas Cage's uh, movie back to the top. You know, me too. Because it looks, I, I really thought people would flock to that. It must be one of those movies that's too intelligent for a lot of people right now. A lot of movies are getting dumbed down. I mean, it's just the I, way it is. I'm, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but movies are getting dumbed down. Um, it's disappointing. Choose, huh? It's disappointing. I thought, I, I agree with you. I thought Nicolas Cage, this was going to be his, like, comeback. Because he's been making, prior to this movie, Redbox we've talked famous. just anything. He'll make anything to pay his bills. I mean, he's been in a lot of stuff. Straight to Speaking DVD of, movies. 
Yeah, speaking of movies he's done, I'm not sure if you have this on the format. I'm going to make a really quick thing about it. Uh, somebody leaked from a survey thing. Somebody filmed it with their cell phone. That they took a survey to watch uh, trailers of upcoming movies that haven't been their trailers haven't been released yet, and they mm -hmm. recorded the Five Nights at Freddy's trailer while they were doing the survey. It got leaked online earlier today, and I got to say it looks pretty pretty good. It looks like they're going to stick to the format of the games. It's got really? uh, Matthew Lillard in it. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, but yeah. Uh, the, Matthew the, Lillard is going to be in Five Nights at Freddy? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Look down, look it up, man. Google the. I'm sure somebody's got it posted somewhere now. I would definitely like to see that. And anything with Matthew Lillard, I think, is automatically better. He's one of my favorite Matthew kind of just so. character guys. Uh, Josh, big news, dude. Big anniversary. Nightmare, <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street 2010. <laughs> was released in theaters April 27th, 2010, 13 years ago. $35 million production budget actually made $117 million at the box office. So financially, the 2010 Nightmare on Elm Street remake was an absolute financial success. Yeah. Uh, but Josh and I ripped that movie. Uh, episode what of Slash Tracks? I think that was 32, 33? 30, 33, 33, 33. Yeah. You can find that on the Slash Tracks Network uh, channel if you just look below, uh, search our videos. But Josh and I are on record. We don't like the movie. We've, uh, we're eventually going to have to cover it on Slash, Track, Slash Tracks Reviews at some point. And we've also riffed it, which we just said uh, 13 years ago, made a ton of money. But it's really telling, Josh, that a movie that made that much money for a company killed the franchise. Yeah. It did. I feel like... That movie, they were just trying to play it safe, kind of like Superman Returns in 2006. They played it too safe. Sorry, our, one of my cameramen off camera here is coughing. Um, fact here checking us. <laughs> it's one of our here fact checkers. <laughs> yeah. But no, the last thing I wanted to say about all of that is Renfield. I'm, I'm really upset about that. It was something I was going to watch on Redbox. You know, Rent from not, Redbox. Not RedTube. <laughs> not RedTube. Um, I was I'm sad about that, but like I can't watch a ton of movies. I've got bills and stuff, and but I, I had to pick between going to see Renfield or Evil Dead Rise. So I'm I'm gonna go see Evil Dead Rise uh, instead. So Evil Dead Rise just went over a hundred million dollars at the box office. So that movie is a, a smash hit, certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, and Josh, I don't want to get your hopes up. I didn't even write this in the format, but since you brought it up, I'm gonna bring it up. Bruce Campbell. Somebody asked him on Twitter, they said, do you miss uh, Ash Williams? And he said, I'm actually starting to miss the guy a little bit. So, <laughs> cool. Flashaholics, yeah. Evil Dead Rise is blowing the fuck up at the box office right now. Everybody loves the Evil Dead right now. That might uh, be why he misses Ash. Yeah. Like, Bruce, oh, Cam <laughs> Bruce Campbell was on record saying he retired uh, Ash. Well, he's not saying it's retired anymore. Now he's saying he misses the character. Take it as you will. Take it as you will. Is he going to come back, Josh? Is he going to be Ash one more time? Uh, for the for the right price, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Maybe, maybe that money like like got his attention. <laughs> yeah, I, no doubt, man. I that's got to be hard to uh, be the face of a franchise for so long and every it's so well known with the franchise, you know, the product and stuff, and then something comes out that's even bigger financially than anything you ever did. That's got to be kind of like a a blow to you, but at the same time exciting because then it's like, well, what if I come back? What could we do? You know, yeah, sort of deal. Exactly. Yeah. I want to see that. You know, I wish they would do a Cabin in the Woods sequel or a prequel. Cabin in the Woods prequel. I want to see um, more of that story because I thought the Evil Dead was going to stop after the remake came out because they, they talked about doing a sequel and never did. And that got me thinking, you know, a movie that's really close to the way Evil Dead feels was Cabin in the Woods. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really love very the similar. Of that. Huh? It's very similar in to like in tone to begin the movie, but yes. obviously it's more uh, comedic. But yeah. I was going to say, Cabin in the Woods. If they did a prequel, I'd really like to see how they got some of the monsters. Yeah. Wrangled. Yeah. That would be interesting it's, to see how they did that. Or TV series, so every episode we could see a different scenario playing out with different people. Yes. Or. Awesome. Or that, or even a spinoff of a different scenario of how each monster uh, operates. Because they just show quick 
quick hits of like yeah. you could choose this one or that one. It's like, well, let's just see them all in a whole season. Yeah, depending on what you what item you pick up in the cabin or whatever is how is the scenario you get thrown into. Yeah, exactly. I'd like to see, you know, I want to see that. There's so many items. Um, I don't know how I got to that from <clears throat> Evil Dead. I'm sorry. Who cares? Renfield, That's good shit. I hope that Renfield becomes at least a cult favorite. You know, whenever it hits digital and DVD and everything, I think it has the makings of a cult classic. I'm sad that it didn't do better. Maybe the fans will love it so much that the studios will take notice, you know, and uh, maybe that'll help Nicholas because it doesn't have to do financially well. Like if the Rotten Tomato audience score is like 80 to 100, that's also a good sign for a movie. So Nowadays, now if Renfield doesn't make all of its money back in the theatrical run, if it can somehow make quite a bit of money in the Blu-rays, the digital release, that it has a chance to make its money back. So here's hoping that Nicolas Cage, this doesn't just kill his comeback. That yeah. would, that would be awful. Cause he just um, did that other one that everybody loved the one yeah. about him. So. Yes. Nicholas Nicholas Cage is a great actor. He's an Academy award winning actor. He just, he's done some shit cause he had to, because he bought like the elephant man, elephant man's bones and a bunch of other weird shit. <laughs> he bought the first, bone. Yeah, he bought a T-Rex bone. He bought the first Superman comic book. He's done a bunch of weird crap financially, and he's paying for it yeah. um, in more ways than one, financially and with his career. But he's coming back, and I, I want to see it because I like Nicolas Cage. Yes. Yeah. Um, last horror story of the episode, <clears throat> Josh and I talked about it off camera for a second. Uh, our friends, Paige Joy, Anthony Brownlee, Fred Heads, the documentary is now available to watch and purchase on Amazon Prime. So if you guys haven't seen the, the documentary, uh, go do us a favor and our friends a favor. Go check out their film. I think it's really neat that they got something, uh, a major movie done, and it's available for streaming. I think that's one of the coolest things in the world. It's 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 exciting. It's really neat. And anything Freddie I like, so it's totally cool. Yeah, so check it out. And if you yeah, want to see more of Paige, you can watch Slash Tracks episode number two from yep. way back in 2020. We watched uh, Freddie's Dead and did a semi-riff, semi-serious commentary for that movie with her. We might actually do a full riff on that movie in the future, yeah. uh, as well as Jason X, but we'll see. I was, um, hey, before we get into headlines to end the show, I was going to say, one movie that I was on the fence about riffing that I kind of would almost think we should riff, it's teed up, is Dream Master. Okay. Um, I, I like Dream Master a lot. I just feel like there's a lot of material that we're gonna waste if we don't yeah. riff it at I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll all get treatment at some point for sure like maybe not Dream Warriors I love that one and uh, yeah I love not. Dream Warriors Dream Warriors never <laughs> Freddy versus riffed. Jason you're getting riffed one day sorry Freddy versus Still Jason might get, hey Freddy versus Jason might get riffed tonight with special guest riffer Duke the Dumpster Drowsy in attendance drowsy people yeah how many Drowsy's trash cans do you give this movie Duke oh it's a shitter bud I'm gonna give you one and a half <laughs> trash cans son <laughs> He's uh, everywhere. Headlines. Let's get into the headlines. Headline. Let's do it. Or headlines. All right. Here we go. Uh, Josh, <laughs> drunk Florida man claims he only drank at stoplights and not while driving. So in 2018, a 69 year old Florida man got stopped and arrested after he bumped into a car in front of him at a McDonald's drive thru. He said, Listen, I wasn't drinking and driving, I was only drinking at stoplights. And when the car was, <laughs> when I was in the drive-thru waiting for my food, I wasn't actually drinking and driving. Josh, does he have a point? Yes, he does. And I would let him go if I was a police officer. Yeah. I'd be like, you know what? You broke, you broke, you broke me. I, I don't know how to come back at that because you're not lying. So. He's like, yeah, dude, I'm ripped. Down. I'm ripped. I'm bombed right now, dude. But I'm at a stoplight. So fuck off. Uh, yeah. And the cop's like, you know what? Cops like you got me there. You're yeah. you got me. Have a great day. Bye. Uh, Josh, double toilet for lovers that love to do everything together. Dude, it's called the Toodaloo. Josh, we've talked about this too. No, we haven't. <laughs> yes, we have. No, we haven't. Yes, we did. No, we haven't. Because I told you about my first house with my wife. There was a bathroom with a toilet that faced the bed and no wall. Remember? Okay. Well. <laughs> I don't remember, but let me finish real quick, because I don't think we have. No, I'm it's messing with you. Go ahead. <laughs> it's the Toodaloo, inspired by SNL's The Love Toilet skit. Yeah. Uh, it's, an, it's actually 
in production now, and it's uh, supposedly going to include a TV and an iPod docking station. And oh, wow. one of the big selling points for the Toodaloo is that you can save on water. Uh, and the toilet wraps around almost like a heart-shaped necklace that you'd give somebody you, you care about. Like one toilet's coming here, the other one's going like that. You get, you're kind of setting side by side, and you can have a little bit of romance while you're both taking a dump on the Toodaloo. I see this becoming more of an easy way to teach twins how to uh, get potty trained. But uh, who the hell needs an iPod docking station? I like don't nobody know. has who a fucking a, iPod anymore. There's a reason it was a, a parody commercial on Saturday Night Live, people. Okay, <laughs> there's there's people that have been married twenty years that still you know go to the bathroom, turn the fan on. Dude, there's some freaky no. fetishes out there, Josh. There's stuff we haven't even scratched the surface on. Like, um, did girls sell feet pictures now? Like, some girls don't even work anymore because they well, sell feet jars. pictures. Fart in jars, sell them. We did cover that on an episode. Yeah. Um, fart in jars, mail them to people that want to smell their farts. Um, just a lot of craziness. You know, when I, okay, so I went to Reno one time to bowl in the National Bowling Championship. And this is when I was like 19. We were staying at the Fitzgerald's, which isn't even a hotel in Reno anymore. But anyway, I had my friend Jimmy there with me. There was a glass, a piece of glass, okay, between the living room and the bathroom. If he put his face to the glass, it looks like I can see his face 100% clearly. He can't see through it, though, because of the way the glass is. But I can see his face, but he can't see mine. Yeah. He can't see me taking a dump, but it sure as hell looks like he can see me taking a dump. So yeah. anytime I tried to go to the bathroom, he'd just run to the window and put his face on the glass to <laughs> suck with me. Asshole. I couldn't shit the entire trip. Dude, yeah. my the house I grew up in was like haunted as shit, man. It was so creepy. I don't really haunted, but it, some creepy stuff happened. I was scared. Uh, we lived out in, out in the country, and to go to the bathroom... I would get scared. So uh, I'd have to make my little sister stand outside the bathroom door uh, some nights when it was, like, late. And I'd yeah. like, hey, wait up. And <laughs> make her stand outside the bathroom door just so somebody was there so the monsters would get her instead of me. Hell yeah, um, dude. Back up. <laughs> Seriously, back up. Just in case when you're taking yeah. a shit, you don't know what's going to happen. Because you're, you're most vulnerable when you're taking a dump. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have, have a lookout for the ghost. Exactly. Stuff, so. Josh, <laughs> here's a fun fact we've never talked about since we're talking about this. Animals, <clears throat> have you ever taken your dog outside to go poop? Yeah. Do you know why they, like, look at you? They're, like, making eye contact with you when they're pooping? Because they need you for security? Because yes. they're vulnerable? Yes, because yeah. they're at their most vulnerable because they're taking a poop. So, you know what? You got a little bit of animal in you, big dog. Like, just a just an absolute stallion <laughs> over there. Look at you over there. Josh, last story of the show. We're in the show right now, buddy. Let's do it. Okay. <clears throat> All right, dude. Iron Man's oh. house. So you remember Iron Man's house uh, if from the yeah. first Iron Man movie? Super nice, overlooks the ocean. It's kind of round almost on top, like palatial sta- you know, house. The Iron Man house can be rented, Josh, for $20,000 a night. That's An it. almost exact replica of Iron Man's coastal mansion in Cape Town has been offered by Ibiza Summer Villas. It features breathtaking uh, sea views, a full, full fridge, full kitchen, dedicated ai so an ai butler you actually have jeeves or is is that what his name is jeeves or what the hell is his name and yeah, something like that yeah something like that but anyway yeah. ai butler fully stocked fridge it's breathtaking bad. views would you rent this house for twenty thousand dollars no i'm a dc guy Just, uh-oh my my daughter would she she loves marvel and iron man so i can see her giving her life savings up at one day to do that but well if we get to bang Pepper Potts and wear the Iron Man suit, I'd probably do it for 20 you know, Yeah, whatever. good for that. Shit, yeah, Maybe. I can fly around in the Iron Man suit all night. And, yeah. Dude, my first time in the Iron Man suit, I'm a dead man. I'm not going to know what I'm doing. I'm flying in some power lines. I'm dead. You, you, they're like, okay, uh, time to put on the Iron Man suit. And you're like, yeah. And they're like, first, we got to explode the shrapnel into your heart. Exactly. Um, so, hold on. Stand right there. What? Just right there. Hold on. Boom. <laughs> You did. Oh God! <laughs> like, don't explode that shrapnel in my heart until I can make direct eye contact with you, just like I do when I'm taking a shit. <laughs> Josh. Everybody. Yeah. No, go ahead. 
Go ahead. As Duke the Drowser Drowsy. Duke the Drowser. Duke the Drowser Drowsy. Duke, Duke the Dumpster Drowsy. Uh, Drowsy, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, be sure to email the guys at Slash Tracks at Slash Tracks 2020 at gmail.com. Uh, what can they write us about there, Alex? They can write us if they like to show the content. They can uh, part partner with us if they want to be a sponsor, if you're a business. Uh, if you're just uh, one of the Slashaholics, which is just as important to us as uh, future sponsors, uh, you can write us. You can do Dear Slashy questions where we'll give you guys advice. And you can also offer would you rather scenarios for us to answer on the show. If we think it's good enough, we may feature you in a future episode. And you can become a patron. And, you know, have a Zoom call with us every month. Uh, I'm giving out stickers and cool tattoos. Slash, they're slasher stickers, collectible things. Things are really neat. Uh, a lot of cool stuff going on there. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash 80 slasher librarian. Um, is that it? That's it, Josh. End the show, buddy. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. Be excellent to each other. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dogs. <laughs>